Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I'm going to continue exploring Akka.NET and I'm going to cover child actor and child actor supervision in Akka.NET. So to start that, what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to create a child actor and use the child actor as a part of the notification actor and then go ahead and implement actor supervision for handling errors. So let's first start with the child actor. So let's say as a part of the notification actor, we want to send a text message. So instead of using a separate class of email notification the way I did earlier, if I have to manage exception and how to deal with that, now the responsibility comes to the notification actor to deal with all these responsibilities. Instead of that, if we have an actor who handles that, it becomes much more easier. So for that, let's say we want to send I'll keep the email notification implementation as is because this goes to show how to use dependency injection with the actors. For the feature that I'm going to implement as a child actor is going to be text notification. So let's say we want to create, we want to create an actor who is responsible for sending text notification. So let's go ahead and create a new class who is responsible for sending text messages and we are going to name it as text notification actor. So once the class is created, I'm going to derive this class from untyped actor. And I'm going to override the onReceive method. And for this class, in the onReceive method, just like the previous one, I'm just going to have a console.writeLine statement, which is going to print out that it has received the message. So it'll say, sending text message the message itself and just like the previous actor which I created in my last video I'm going to provide the link of my last video up there if you have not watched it I strongly encourage to watch it because this is a continuation of my last video so I'm going to override the pre-start and pre-stop Okay, so now at this point, the child actor is created. So I'm going to go back to the notification actor and here I'm going to create an instance of the child actor. So before I do that, first I'm going to declare the child actor. So for that, I'm going to say And here I'm going to say child actor is equal to the current context dot actor of. And here for the prop, I'm going to use di so that I can get the actor from dependency injection for testing purposes. So I'll do a di. I'll add the namespace for di, which is akka.di.core. And then here I'll say props and I'll pass the name of the actor, which is text notification actor. So this will create an instance of the child actor. Just for consistency, I'll provide this dot. And after I send the email notification, I'm going to call the child actor and do the, and call the tell method and here I'm going to pass the message. Once I do that, my new child actor is created. 
It's pretty simple, straightforward. And I get an instance of the child actor from the DI here, and then use the child actor and ask to perform some task, calling the tell method, which will send the message to the child. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the program class, and instead of the main method, I'm going to add the newly created child actor into the dependency injection container. So I'll say text notification actor. And this will register the newly created actor into the actor system. And now I'll keep rest of the implementation same. And I'm just going to go ahead and run this application. And if I run this, I should see that the message has been processed by the child actor. So you can see actor started, text notification child actor started, this is the child actor. And then message received by the main actor, then sending email message by the I email notification provider, which is a normal class. And then sending text message, which is the child actor for sending text notification. So this is how you can chain the actors or you can create multiple child actors who are responsible for doing their own thing, essentially creating single responsibility actors, hence not worrying about managing concurrency and threads for concurrent work. It will be handled by the Arca.net infrastructure. So now that we have done this, the next thing or the next topic I want to cover is Akka supervision, which is basically Akka.net's way of managing exceptions. So when an exception happens for a child actor, usually the exception, if even if you throw an exception or an error occurred, it will not be going back to the system or break anything. It will always be handled by the parent actor. And the parent actor has a default policy of restart, which means if you don't do anything, you just keep everything as is. And if you throw an exception from the child, it will just restart the actor. So I'm going to show that. What I'm going to do here is in the text notification actor, after this line, I'm just going to throw a new exception. Just an exception. And here in the program, yeah, I have a console dot right. So I'm going to run this. And once I run it, you can see that the actor started, text notification, child started, hello, message received, sending email message, sending text, this is the child. After that, the exception has happened, which is this test exception. But along with that exception, you can see that the test notification child was stopped, and then the text notification child was started. So the default behavior of the parent actor is to restart the child, and that is what it did which is pretty nice because then the system is just not going to break because you have an unhandled exception. So now let's go ahead and implement proper behavior for the supervision. And let's change the code a little bit. Let's say we are going to react based on the message. So for different messages, we are going to throw different exceptions and this will make us you know, handle or show different cases. For example, there are things like restart, stop, resume, escalate. Escalate is essentially escalating to the top level, which means the parent actor also is not going to handle it and let it go to the higher up. I'm not going to get into that because you know that requires multiple actors and then figuring out strategy, but you get the idea. It's basically letting the top level actor handle it. I'm going to show the stopping of an actor, just resuming for business as usual, and the third one is restarting the actor. So let's say if message dot to string is equal to n, we want to throw a null reference exception. So throw a new null reference exception. This is the first one. And then I'm just going to copy these two lines. And next one I'll say if the message is E, then I'm just going to show you argument exception. And then finally, I'm going to say if the message dot to string is empty, so so if that's the case, then I'm just going to throw a base exception. Now once I'm done with that, I'm throwing multiple types of exception and I want the actor to be handled differently with different supervision strategy. So for that, I'm going to go back to the notification actor and here I'm going to override the supervision strategy. So I'll say override 
supervision strategy and here instead of returning the base supervision I'm going to return a new one for one strategy so there are two types of strategy I'm going to provide the link to my blog where I discuss more about this but one of them is one for one strategy which essentially means that the strategy is for the actor for which the exception has occurred which means if actor one has gotten child actor one has got an error that it will be handled only for child actor one whereas the other one is all for one strategy here all the child actor will get the same instruction which means it doesn't matter which one gets the exception everyone else will be impacted so there are situations where you will use the all for one strategy but most of the time you'll go with one on one strategy or one for one strategy so i'm going to explain that now there are a couple of things here we can use uh, there are some named input parameters so first one is max number of retries which is how many number of retries that you can try within a specified time range and the within a time range is going to specify that and here I'm going to say time span dot from minute one so I'm basically I'm basically saying that within a minute we can have maximum 10 number of retries of the strategy beyond that the worker will be stopped and then the last one is the decider so we're going to say local only decider and for this one I'm going to handle the exception and I'm going to say for the exception return and I'm going to do a switch case on the exception and in the switch case I'm going to say if it is argument exception in this case just do a resume means don't worry just continue as is in case of null reference exception I'm going to give the directive of restart which means just restart the restart the actor and for any other exception I'm going to say just stop the actor because I don't know how to deal with that so this is the condition I'm going to provide so this is the three strategies I have provided once the strategies are declared I'm going to go into the program.cs and I'm going to modify the main method now instead of having this one call I want to make sure that the call can be multiple based on user input for that I'm going to change the implementation a little bit I'm going to say console dot write line and here I'm going to say enter message and then after that I'm going to do while and instead of while method I'm going to say I'm going to read line keep it in the message and if message is equal to Q then I'm just going to break otherwise I'm just going to do actor dot tell and I'm going to send the message incoming and then after that I'm going to continue I'm going to delete this line I'm going to continue the final read line and finally stop the actor so now we are ready with the program we have the test notification which is sending multiple exception based on condition we have the notification actor who has defined a strategy and in the strategy it is handling different conditions and then finally updated the program so now it's time to run so I'm going to run this application once I start I'm just going to do a hello aka.net the first message to test things out and I can see everything is working as expected message is received by the parent actor then the I email provider doing its thing and then it's going to the child actor it is printing its thing now let's start with sending a 
null. Let's first do an argument exception, which will essentially just resume and not do anything. Go back to the console here and say argument exception, which is generated by ye. And we can see here message is retrieved by the parent. The email has been sent, but the child actor essentially got an error, but it is not breaking. There is no, you can see that child actor, there is no stopped or restart start message. So nothing happened. Child actor is working as expected. Now, if we send another test message, we'll see it's working, sending text message test by the child actor. So child actor is working as expected. Now let's try to restart it. And for restarting, we are going to say a null reference exception. So we'll send a null reference exception. Once it happens, you can see that the message is received by the parent actor. Then it uses the I email notification provider to send a notification. And then text notification actor did not do anything because it got an error. But then the parent went ahead and restarted the child. It stopped and started. Now let's, let's again test, send another test message to see if the actor is working as expected. So let's say new text message. Something is not working. Here is the problem. Since I restarted the worker, if you remember in the program, all the objects are singleton. So now it is not able to get a handle of the newly created actor. So I have to change it from singleton to scoped. And that's going to, and that's going to make it work. So let's start all over again. So I'll just start with the test. It's working as expected. Go with the argument exception. This is also working as expected. Test again. Yeah, everything works. Sending a text message. Now let's do the null reference exception. And we can see just like before the actor is restarted. Now let's do test again. And this time we can see that it is working. We send a text message, test again. It's received by the parent actor. Then it send an email. Then it received by the child actor. So now everything is working as expected. The problem was earlier it's because I kept it as singleton. So the object, though the Akka created, Akka infrastructure just restarted the actor, it never reflected because it was out of the scope. Now let's test out the last one, which is an exception and should stop the actor. And after the actor is stopped, even if we send a message, it will never go to the actor. It will go into a dead letter queue. So I'm just going to send an empty. If I send an empty, you can see that the message received by the parent and the I email notification provider. And then we got an exception by the child actor and child actor is stopped here. Now if I send a message, see for the child actor, because it is dead, the message is going to the dead letter queue. The count is one. If I send again, count will increment by two and it will remain in the dead letter until the actor is started again. So this is all I had to cover today. I hope you like this video. If you like it, please give me a thumbs up. And if you have been getting value out of this channel and you have not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe it. Thank you so much.